Hi there, I'm Carol Lutzinger, and I'm here to spend some time with you having fun with science stuff. Today we're going to talk about SpaceX, space missions, gravity, and make a paper airplane. Well, a paper rocket. And so, without any further wasting of time, I want to show you a little demonstration of gravity. So, I have a jar here. It's something that flowers came in. I didn't go out and buy it. And I have a string of Christmas decoration here. So, you know, when you drop something, it doesn't fly up, it falls down. So let's see what happens. Yikes, it's all gone. Where did it go? Down on the floor. Gravity is a force that pulls everything towards the center of the Earth. It is not magnetism. Don't confuse gravity with magnetism. Magnetism is a whole nother thing. But gravity is a pulling force and it pulls everything to the center of the Earth. When you stand here in, at home, that gravity force is pulling you down to the floor. Imagine that, otherwise you'd just be floating around. Because our Earth is as big as it is, there's just enough force to hold you down. When we send a rocket into space or an airplane off the landing strip, it's going against the force of gravity and it has to have enough force to break that force of gravity to get airborne. That's why when you go on an airplane, they tell you you can bring one suitcase, but if you bring another one, you have to pay more because it takes more fuel, which costs more money, to get the plane off the ground when it's loaded with all of your packages and suitcases and bundles that you got on your trip. So this morning, today, we're going to talk about making your own paper rocket. Now, Buzz Lightyear is here to help do the work. And did you know that Buzz Lightyear flew on the International Space Station? He really did. Uh, one of the astronauts took him on board, and when he came back, Disney World had a big parade for Buzz Lightyear, and Buzz Aldrin rode in the parade with him, and it was a lot of fun. Some of you may have the idea that you would like to work in the space program, and whatever your talent is, whatever your skill is, there is something that can be done with the space program, whether it's SpaceX or the European Space Agency or NASA or whatever one comes along in the future. But to do our model rocket, all you need is a sheet of paper, a straw, something long and round like a pencil, and some scotch tape. And paper rockets help you understand about force and motion. And just having fun with it is one thing. If you're going to do studies with it, well, that's a whole nother ball game, but we're just going to have fun. So I have my sheet of paper and I'm going to cut a strip off of this paper. And it doesn't matter how long it is or how, how wide it is. It just matters on what you want to do. And I have, I'm going to lay the paper down flat on the table and put my pencil on the paper and start rolling it down the pencil. And you have to keep it snugly against your pencil because if you don't, air comes out of your rocket and that's not good. So we want to capture all of that and put scotch tape on it. So, there's plenty of that out now in the stores. Your mom probably has some stashed around the house too somewhere. So ask her permission if you can have some scotch tape and some paper and make your paper rocket. Now, the secret to this is to keep it snug against your pencil. And you can see that mine is coming undone. And that means air would come out of these. So I have to tighten it up again and put my tape on it to hold it shut. Now, because I don't want the air leaking out, I'm going to put a whole long strip of tape along the whole thing. And so now I have my tube for my rocket. Now, 
if I left it open like that, what would happen when I blow through it? Well, the air would just come out the end. This would only be like a straw. So I have to close one end of my rocket. And I'm going to do that by putting my pointy pencil in, in there and twist it around so that I have a point on my rocket. And then I'm going to take another little bit of tape and put it around the end of the nose of the rocket. Now, I don't know whether you've know whether you know this or not, but the rocket company that's out at Boca Chica Beach has a YouTube channel that you can go and watch their tests that they make and their rocket is sitting out there with a cone on it and they want that rocket to go to Mars. We'll see. I'm hoping that it works. You never know. That's why we test. So on my end, that's, the other end that's pointy and open, I'm going to trim that off. And a rocket needs fins. So I'm just going to make my own fins. I don't need a pattern. If you need a pattern, they're online. You can get it for yourself. But I just like to make my own. And so I'm going to cut a fin shape. And that's all it is, is a triangle. And fold it carefully so that it'll fit around my pencil shape rocket so that it's kind of like that. And put my rocket here and put a little bit of tape there. You might need a friend to help you do this. I don't know. Sometimes when my students did this, they wanted to do it all by themselves, and other times it helped to have a partner. You know, when scientists are working on building rockets, they don't work by themselves. They work in a team. And a team, my goodness, you have to have a team to play baseball, don't you? You have to have a team to put a rocket in space. It's fun to imagine doing it all by yourself, but more the merrier. And everybody has good ideas, so you want to make sure that that you're keeping that idea together. And so now I need my other fins. So here's my other fins. And as you can tell, I didn't measure. So you want to measure. Because <laughs> I think I have two different sizes of fins here. But that's okay, because we'll see what happens when I fire my rocket off. And I'll say, oh, no, I need to change my design. Oh, yeah, look at that. See, the other rocket fin is much, much bigger. Well, let's see. I think I will just trim it off a little bit here. And this is called trial and error. And that's what science is all about. You test it. If you've been following SpaceX, you know that they have tested several different models of their little spacecraft, and they tested it um, several months ago. They've got another one lined up that they're going to do uh, in December, and what they're testing is, will their engine lift the rocket very high in the sky, and will it come back down at the same place? So they're, they're anxiously waiting to test it, and people around the world are watching on the internet to see what happens. Okay, so here's my rocket, and you might think, well, that's awfully small, but yes, some rockets are small and some are big. So now I need a straw, and I hope my straw fits in my rocket, because that's my propellant. Rockets use a f a f fuel to go. And our fuel is the air in our lungs. And you know what happens when you blow on a straw. You get something happening. So let's see what happens with my rocket. Three, and that's how my rocket went. Now, it didn't go very far and it didn't go very high. So as a science person, I would be thinking, OK, how do I need to modify or change my rocket. Should I use lighter weight paper? Should I make smaller fins? Should I blow harder? Should I use a bigger straw? All of those are called variables. And anytime you're working with science, you have variables that you have to think about. 
Testing and playing with paper rockets is a good beginning, maybe to a career to designing rockets or illustrating rockets for books and magazines. Who knows where your imagination will take you. Until next time, for more science stuff, I'm Carol Lutzinger.